I think he could be a great NFL coach. I mean, he has the work ethic. He has the passion for the game. Uh, I, I know that, uh, I mean, he, he, he loves this sport, and so I know he, he'd be able to relate to quarterbacks. And so he'll, he would put in the work, and uh, now it's about him finding out where he needs to be at. Patrick Mahomes talking about his former college head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, who was fired in November from Texas Tech, where he was 35 and 40. And even with Patrick Mahomes, was not able to put together strong teams. Gone, lands on his feet at USC, and then a month later, he's now the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And this all happened so quickly, Chris. And look, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how this is going to play out. But it just seems odd. When, when you look at the Cardinals announcement, they've revised it. Initially, it said that Kingsbury is friends with Sean McVay. They've taken that out because they realized they were getting killed for that. This idea that we want anyone who's an offensive coach who has any connection to Sean McVay, it really is getting a little bit ridiculous. I'm not saying it doesn't mean it's, it's going to fail or it means it's going to succeed. I don't know. That's separate. But the idea that teams are trying to jam themselves into this Sean McVay narrative it's it's a it's a little more than over the top at this point uh, extremely over the top I, I mean first of all I, I think the fact that they're trying to sell that he's friends with Sean McVay almost shows that they're almost like trying to make up reasons for why they are hiring him I mean that to me that's the first funny thing but yes to your point everybody's looking for the next Sean McVay and I get that he's the man he's as smart as it gets you know I call him kid genius uh he's an extremely very creative that's yes. a very creative nickname hey you know me it really my is words. Kid genius. I'm good with yeah. them yeah <laughs> that's, <laughs> but that's see he's a kid he's a genius let's call him kid genius he's right, a man he's a man uh but no regardless he is an extremely impressive person and I get teams wanting to you know copy that and do that Kyle Shanahan same thing the difference is and what I think everybody's missing first of all is these guys grew up in the NFL the McVeigh's and the Shanahan's McVeigh was the coach of a really uh offensive coordinator of a really good offense with the Washington Redskins after a few years of being underneath Kyle Shanahan who already had a plethora of top five and top 10 offenses whether it was in uh Houston Washington DC Atlanta then he goes there and does that so I think that's the first thing that people don't realize you know the college coach genius okay uh there's two that always come to my mind right away. This offensive college coach genius, Steve Spurrier and Chip Kelly. How did that work out? Not that great. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, yes, I have doubts. I do want to say this, Mike. Cliff Kingsbury is he is head coach material like he has the potential to be a really good head coach uh, I've always thought that I've been around Cliff a bunch and he can lead men and he can do all of those things but I just think this is too premature at this point coming from Texas Tech nobody in college football really wanted to hire him as a head coach and now you're going to make him the head coach of an NFL football team because why they recruited they recruited Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield to their school. You know, that's what I, I don't understand. So, uh, yes, I feel this similar with this and the Matt LaFleur hire. The same thing. Guys got a lot of qualities, but this is way too premature. And th I don't think they're ready for this type of job. Cliff Kingsbury has been in coaching since 2008. He started as an offensive quality control coach at the University of Houston, yep. became the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. 2012, the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Texas A&M, and then was the head coach at Texas Tech through 2018. From 2013 through 2018, 35 and 40 was his record and fired hired by USC as offensive coordinator and became the subject of kind of a tug of war between the Cardinals and the Jets, although I think it was always Kingsbury to the Cardinals now that the dust has settled on it. And and yeah, it's it's obvious in the announcement, they, they mentioned Sean McVay's an offensive genius and they, they touted the connection between Kingsbury and McVay. And again, they've taken that that language out because yes. they got killed it's for it. ridiculous, right. It, it, it is, it's, it's just, it... I, and, and again, I, I don't want to say it means he's going to fail. He no. can end up being highly successful. Right. But these jobs are very few and far between. And there's a certain level of credential that I think you need to have to be a viable candidate. And Cliff Kingsbury isn't there yet. He's not even remotely close to being there. And this may help him, Chris. I was talking about this on the radio side. With Chip Kelly, when he finally became the coach of the Eagles in 2013, 
That was after years of courtship, and we had gotten accustomed to the idea that Chip Kelly's eventually going to come to the NFL, just like when Spur Spurry's finally coming to the NFL, Nick Saban's finally coming to right. the NFL, and years so of dominating the college ranks. Right? I mean, before right. that, right? Right. But but the so the bar was high for them. This is the one positive for Kingsbury and the Cardinals, because Kingsbury's just popping up out of the blue, and we're all saying, "Oh, this is bad. This isn't going to work. It's premature." The bar is low. And that's a good thing. It is. It, the, the bar is naturally going to be. Congratulations, Cardinals. You have managed in just a few short years to take the bar from here all the way down to here. But if the bar is going to be anywhere, you want it to be low. That's the one positive that comes out of this for the Cardinals and for Kingsbury because nobody's going to expect anything because everyone's going to say exactly what we're saying now. It's too early. He's not ready. It's not going to work. And so if they go 6-10 and 10 the first year, that's a pretty good year. Yes, I mean, no doubt about that. The fact that it is a low bar is great. Uh, but again, you know, I, uh, this is a, what I would call a hope hire. This is a hope hire. Oh, I, I hope this works out. I mean, he looks good at the podium and, you know, he, he's, he's got great charisma and good people skills that way. I hope he turns into Sean McVay. I hope, I hope. And I feel like the same thing with Matt LaFleur. You know, I'll go back to the, the what, uh, with Kingsbury. I really do think he has the potential to be a really good head coach. But I don't know if this is going to be the best thing for him to really maximize his potential. You know, I'll go back to something I say to you a lot. I don't think he uh, knows what he, or he doesn't know what he doesn't know yet. You know what I'm saying there? Because he's been basically in one offensive system his whole life. Now, I know he got one year on the practice squad with the New England Patriots and maybe a training camp with the New Orleans Saints. You're not going to digest the entirety of those two offenses because you hung around for a year or a few months. I've watched film of Patrick Mahomes coming out in the draft. I covered games when Cliff Kingsbury was the head coach and Baker Mayfield was the quarterback down there. And he wasn't even sure if Baker Mayfield should be the starter at that time. Just to point that out to everybody, he was favoring Davis Webb. So they were going back and forth between that. But it, it is a college offense, yes. And I would say when I break it down, you know, there's it's got limitations, Mike. It's not like you break this offense, go down and go, oh, man, look at all these formations and different concepts they do. No, it's great pace. They get to the line of scrimmage quickly, but the concepts are kind of simple and they just try to spread you out and throw it all over the field. And and as we've seen with the other guys that you talked about, Spurrier, uh, Chip Kelly, you know, after defensive coordinators got to see the offense once or twice or just acquired a little film, man, did they start to sputter out in a hurry. And by the way, Baker Mayfield will have an opportunity to stare down Cliff Kingsbury this season, 2019, Browns at Cardinals. So put that one on the primetime list of preferred games this year as well. Look, with, with, with Kingsbury and Mahomes, because I think it's the combination of being friends with Sean McVay <laughs> and being responsible for Patrick Mahomes. Right. But when, when we consider where the world was two years ago as the draft was approaching Mahomes wasn't regarded as the must-have can't miss guy if if we knew now yes. or then what is it if we knew then what we know now about Mahomes he would have been the number one pick and and I'm saying all this because Kingsbury didn't draw out of him the things that Andy Reid has drawn out of him and and he came into the NFL as a much less polished product and that's a result of the coaching he got or didn't get from from Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, people were scared. You know, when I, you know, at, at the time and Mahomes was coming out, I was doing draft videos at Bleacher Report talking about Patrick Mahomes and I think he's the best quarterback in the draft and he's really special. I had NFL people and everybody going, you're crazy. That's just a Texas Tech. You're looking at yards. And I'm like, no, sorry. I mean, this guy made the offense go. I think that's the big thing. Again, I think this is the thing. I really like Cliff Kingsbury. I want to make that point clear. And I am a believer in him I don't think this is really gonna be like I'm saying gonna be the best thing for his career ultimately I would have loved to have seen him go maybe be the OC at USC for a few years if he really wanted to dabble in the NFL he could have got an offensive coordinator job here in the next year or two anyways we've we've heard that when he got fired from Texas Tech Andy Reid wanted to bring him in as a consultant Sean McVay wanted to bring him in as a consultant they want to pick his brain few steal a few ideas from him and I think he could have grown into 
into something really special under the tutelage of those guys with the offense he already has in the back of his mind. So, you know, again, I'm not faulting Cliff Kingsbury for taking the job because there's only 32 of these and you don't know if you'll ever be offered one again. So good for him. But I'm just saying right now, I think organizations and teams are um, not hiring necessarily the best candidates that are out there for the head coaching position. They're all just going, oh, quarterback whisperer. He was with good quarterbacks. Oh, he must be good. That's that's all there is at the end of the day. And there's just more to that. And I think there was other options out here where you could have played along and maybe hired a defensive coach who could have brought in a great offensive coordinator. That's all I'm saying here. Uh, I, I don't want to go too hard on Cliff because I, I do see a lot of positive attributes there. Yeah, but but you're making a good point, and and I think even he was surprised by this. Otherwise, he wouldn't have taken the USC job right. in early December. Right. If he knew he was going to be in play for NFL head coaching jobs, he waits it out because it, it isn't a good look. I, I, I don't have any problem with him leaving USC. Peter King and I argued about this yesterday because Peter thinks it's not the honorable thing to do, and I said there's no honor in college football, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. But – but he wouldn't have taken that job if he knew he was going to be seriously in play and on that short list. And and it tells me that so much of these decisions are being made by the seat of the pants. They really are. And and and, and owners get antsy. They get desperate. And they just say, ah, oh, screw it. Let's just do it. Let's go get our Sean McVay. I'd rather get our Sean McVay than not get our Sean McVay. If this guy stinks, we can just fire him like we fired Steve Wilkes and go hire somebody else. Exactly right. And I'll throw another, like, you know, uh, just a little thing out here. Food for thought is this. You know, GMs. Okay, when they make these decisions, GMs are good at evaluating players. There's no doubt about that. Steve Kimes had some great free agent signings and some great draft picks and all of that. I get that. Same with our guy in Green Bay. But uh, at, at the end of the day, um, I forgot what I was going to say there. Hold on. I just blanked out on what I was going to say. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's, let, but you think about what you're going to say, because we should take a break at this okay. point anyway. I love come your candor. I love your honesty. And by the way, speaking of hope hires, you were a hope hire, and you're still a hope hire a year and a half later. <laughs> oh, man. Just want you to sorry. Know. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.